Hey, hey, it's been a long day out here. Got a ton of projects going on. Got uh, got some parts for the 1679 build. Got those 88 pistons, they came in. They look pretty good. They look real good, actually. Uh, they're the AA brand, and uh, I was pretty impressed with them myself. They uh, have the Teflon coated skirts. I put one of them on. I already got the uh, deck height measuring tool on. I wanted to. I got to make a trip down to Denver, but uh, yeah, these things. Oh, these 88 slip-ins. They're they're pretty nice. Wrist wrist pins come uh, wrapped separately, and you've got. Uh, You've got the nice snap ring uh, keepers, wrist pin keepers, instead of the rolled wire ones that Volkswagen used to make. And uh, real thin on the base here. I'll cover this in more detail later. Yeah, 87.95. I'm going to push one out here just so uh, you guys can see. So you got the Teflon impregnated skirts. And uh, clean looking casting, nice looking casting. You can see the slot for the oil ring in there, the wrist pin. You know, for the price, heck, two hundred bucks. <laughs> and see, it's a uh, uh, thin slip in for a stock sixteen hundred case on this side, and then on this side, it's uh, extra thick for the ninety two. So the Cylinder wall is thicker for better heat transfer. A lot of guys just throw in those uh, 87s to make a 1641. But I was kind. Of, this is no slipper skirt like the old Gene Berg days. He used to talk about those 88 slipper skirts, and he used to do a lot of racing. Here's a here's a 1600 cylinder side by side, and you can see from a stock 1600, you can see the difference. I hope you can see the difference. How much thicker this is. It's thicker than the stock. So I'm hoping that that'll keep its shape and work out pretty good. The pistons that were in this uh, doesn't look like they had that much wear on them. I don't know what brand they are. I don't know if you can tell by looking at the inside of that piston. I don't know if they're Molly's or what brand they are, but. They're, they're still good pistons. I probably could have reused those. And and you can see here at the, uh, you can see where the wear mark is. See there? The bottom part. Now, it's thinner. Look at the, look at the other side. It's thinner. I should just wait. See, this is real thin compared to this. It's like half as thick. It's a slip in, but it's the the thick the the it's less thick because the larger bore diameter. This one's the same outer on both of these, but the bore diameter is different. Look at the seating surface here too, where it's going to go on the engine. That looks a lot wider. Hmm, I'm liking that. This ought to work out good. This is turning out pretty sweet. I'm getting motivated after watching. Uh, uh, Darren, I might just crack the case on this thing. It is an AS21 case. It's, uh, hopefully a good one. I mean, I'm down this far. It's not that much farther to go the rest of the way and take a look at it. Take a look at the bearings and stuff just for giggles. Um, but anyhow, that's what's going on in the garage. I also, I, I'm being a cheapskate here. And not so much for myself, but I'm kind of curious about this stuff. Here's a distributor. I'm kind of curious on how this will work. These 88 pistons. Here's a uh, $29 for this brand new 009 distributor with points and cap. <laughs> Isn't that? That's crazy. So I'm curious to how this is going to work out. It's a copycat. Who cares? We'll see. Take a look at it. It's even got, gosh, it looks like it's got brass. A lot of the uh, 
aftermarket caps that you get are aluminum. Oh yeah. What is that? Is that brass or aluminum? Looks like brass. Yeah. That's I'm impressed. I bought a spare cap. Let's see uh Let's see what this cap a Bosch cap. Oh, that's copper. Yeah, nice. A lot of them are aluminum. Aluminum gets those little deposits on them a lot quicker. But uh for 29 bucks I thought I'd uh the bearings and stuff, they get sloppy. So I thought I'd see what these are like. I'm planning on going on a trip. I don't know if that'll ever happen. But uh I'm gonna have a spare distributor with me. Just in case. I like to run those Petronics electronic ignition. I bought one of these clutches. This is the second one. I bought a first the first one. It's a solid disc uh solid disc clutch. And I put it in, that's what's in the 2110 right now. Uh, 20 bucks for that puppy. And it seemed real smooth. So, I ordered another one. <laughs> and I'm going to take that uh, Jeanberg pump off the 2 liter. I don't like that oil filter hanging back there. And I'm, I'm probably going to put this on the 2 liter. That's not a, a radical build. I thought I'd try these... Uh, uh, different steel push rods. I may do some uh, changes. Have to do some changes on my rocker arm geometry. It's got the it's got the May West tips. That's cheap stuff, but it's. I think these were seventy five bucks. They feel heavy. The Gene Berg chromoly push rods. Boy, those are the lightest ones I ever felt. Every other pair I've ever said I've ever had have been. Uh, a lot heavier. So that's what's going on. <sighs> Only so many hours in the day. Sun's going down already. Dug out my other little goodie box here. Well, every time you do an engine build, you start going through your stuff, you know. Got some uh, some lash caps, some keepers. Here's small Jeanberg uh, single springs. Some uh, Jeanberg double springs. Pick of the litter, baby. <laughs> That's what Jeanberg used to say. He'd always charge two or three times as much, but he had good stuff. Some uh, Jeanberg chromoly uh, retainers. And uh, hardened steel keepers. Yep, I'm just about... I'm just about done with my Gene Berg stuff, running out, but my years of existence are running out too, so maybe it'll come out even at the end. <laughs> I wonder whoever inherits all this junk will realize what they got. There's so much junk mixed in with it, but it's just uh, what happens when you start doing stuff instead of talking about it. You start accumulating stuff. Anyhow, this video is getting a little bit long. Here's my uh, 36s. I had these on this 1600 that was in the Baja, and it ran really good. It wasn't over carbureted. Those uh, Delordos have uh, 30 millimeter Venturis in it, and they work. Obviously, they work fine on a 1600. So those carburetors work good on anything. I like them a lot. If uh, if you're only going to be able to get one carb, get uh, 40 IDFs. Buy them from CB Performance. Pay through the nose for them. Get them set up. I, I never had to do anything. And you don't have to be that finicky on the jetting uh, if you're running a little bit fat. You don't want to go too fat. But uh, usually the way they come, they have the proper jets in it for the Venturis that they're running for them. If you buy them from other companies, they have whatever they did in Europe, and sometimes it just doesn't work for our type of fuel, and you have to spend more money to, to change parts. So, at any rate, gotta get to crack a lack in here. 
I'm pushing the R button just like the boss said. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out. Go over there and check out Darren's 2110 build. It's pretty cool. Awesome.